English easy. Hi, so what I want to do today is to prove Rice's theorem via the recursion theorem. So you think, why are you proving a theorem with a theorem? It's actually a lot easier to prove Rice's theorem this way than doing it in the straightforward way. So we're going to make a language here called P, which is a set of Turing machine descriptions right here. So M is a Turing machine right here. And what we have is that the language of this machine has some property. So the language could be empty, it could be sigma star, it could be infinite, it could be finite, it could be regular, it could be context-free, some property about the language of the Turing machine. And if this set P is non-trivial, non-trivial means that there is some machine in P and there is some machine not in P, then Rice's theorem says that this is undecidable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to prove this via the recursion theorem and the proof is very, very quick. So let's do it. So how is the setup going to work? Because we have P being a non-trivial set, a non-trivial language, that means that there is some Turing machine that is in P, the set P. I'm going to call it A. There must be at least one. And there must be some Turing machine not in P. I'm going to call that machine B. So B is not having the property and A has the property. Here, I'm going to make a Turing machine M, which is going to have some kind of logical contradiction, which will disprove whether or not P being decidable. So we're going to assume, we're going to assume that P is decidable. And let's call the machine MP decides it. So MP is the Turing machine that decides P. So it gets an arbitrary Turing machine and it decides whether or not that Turing machine has that non-trivial property. So how is this going to work? What we're going to do is we're going to now appeal to the recursion theorem. So the first step of M is to obtain our own description called M. So then now we obtained our own description. Now let's do something useful with it. Well, now what we can do is this supposed decider M sub P can figure out whether the Turing machine has this specific property. So what I'm going to do next is for step two, I'm going to run this MP decider on M because we were able to obtain our own description. So I'm going to have this decider, supposed decider, figure out whether this thing has the property or not. So because this MP machine always halts, it's a decider, that implies that it always accepts or rejects in a finite amount of time no matter what. So let's figure out which is the case. So if MP accepts, so that's one possibility, we'll do something there. And then if MP rejects, then we will do something else. So if MP accepts, then what we want to do is to have a logical contradiction. We want M to disagree with itself. So if we had MP accepts, that means that this machine M has this property P. So if we simulated right here at this point, if we simulated B, the machine B, which does not have the property P, then that will get us a contradiction because if MP accepts, that implies M has the property. But if we simulate B on this input W, effectively making M and B the same machine, they do the same thing, they accept the same strings, then that implies that M is both in P and not in P because it is identical to the B machine with respect to the strings that it runs. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run B on W, and you can probably guess what's going to happen here, is I'm going to run A on W, and let's go through the logic there. So if MP rejects, that means M does not have the property, so it's effectively equivalent to B in this case down here. So that means if we want a contradiction, we want to run A on W so that M and A are effectively the same machine with respect to the strings. And because this property P only has things to do with the language of the machine, 
So in the first case, that means M and B have the same language. And here, down here, M and A have the same language. So with respect to P, these two machines are indistinguishable, whichever the case we're dealing with is. Therefore, our original assumption that P was decidable is false, because if it were decidable, we can build this machine, all of these steps take a finite amount of time, and we can get a logical contradiction because of that. So it's a very quick proof to show that Rice's theorem is true by trying to get the machine to disagree with itself. And we exploited the properties, <laughs> properties of Rice's theorem in that there must be some machine with the property and some machine that does not have the property. And that the language of the machine is the only factor as to whether you are in the set P or not. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about Rice's theorem. I'm watching all of them. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.